Hey guys, Mike here from Sell Your Service. Today I want to talk about Rich Dad Poor Dad's cash flow quadrant. Uh, and particularly, I want to talk about why rich people are rich and perhaps identify a couple of areas why your business doesn't make the money either it deserves to make or that you need it to make. So here's the deal. What we're taught about money is pretty outdated and pretty wrong. And Robert Kiyosaki, for those who don't know, um, he wrote a book called Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Now, I absolutely love um, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. I think it's an outstanding book. It's probably the top, I think it's the top personal finance book of all time. Admittedly, he's had a bit of ins and outs, like people are unsure on whether Rich Dad really existed and like some of the stuff that he said. But the reality is that his teachings are actually very pragmatic. They're absolutely fundamentally correct. He also doesn't say anything that's particularly new. Um, George Glasson basically said a lot of the same things in his book, The Richest Man in Babylon. Um, Andrew Craig has said a lot of it in his book, How to Own the World. A lot of the guys in a lot of personal finance books talk about this same principle, but one that really, really struck a chord with me was the thing they call the cash flow quadrant, which I want to share with you today and kind of explain what that is. Now, this is obviously not any of my own content. This is absolutely from Robert Kiyosaki and the Rich Dad, Poor Dad um, uh, team and book. I think it's Rich Dad Education. Um, I've read all of the books so far. Uh, I think I haven't read the kids or the teenagers book. Um, but basically, the cash flow quadrant is a really fascinating insight into why money doesn't work quite the way you need it to, and also why your business doesn't work the, quite work the way you want it to. There's a bit of a misconception about how to run a business and a bit of a misconception about how to be financially free. A lot of us run our own businesses because we want to be free. We want to be financially free. We also don't want to work for a particular person. And there's a really big flaw in a lot of our thinking. And I, I kind of want to go through that now. So in the center, we have this kind of crosshair. And these are the four quadrants, okay? So first we have E. We then have S. We have B. And we have I. Now these four quadrants represent the four different types of people to make money and the way that money kind of transfers between these quadrants is really really interesting and typically what a lot of people think is that they're in one quadrant when actually they're in another which means that money doesn't work the way they want I'm not just this isn't saying by the way that any of these four quadrants can't make money this is saying that there are differences between the four quadrants and as long as you know absolutely which one that you are in, which quadrant you are in, you're going to be much better suited to generating money and perhaps even fixing some of the things that um, aren't, don't seem to be working. So one of the big symptoms that a lot of businesses have, particularly people like funnel builders, digital marketers and things like this, is that they do their work, so they have their job and the money comes in And it goes on things like expenses, you know, uh, it goes on their own personal costs, um, profit, tax is a big one. And it doesn't ever seem to increase. They don't ever seem to find more money. Their job size might increase. The actual amount of income that they generate might increase. But the amount of money that they keep, i.e. profit, um, doesn't seem to to grow, it always basically seems to stay the same. Tax will increase, uh, their personal costs will increase, and their exp expenses will increase. Now, this if this sounds like you, first of all, this does sound like you, let me know in the comments below, because I think a lot of the problems rely, uh, sorry, a, a lot of the problems that you're experiencing, if that looks like you, if this sounds like you, where your profit pretty much stays the same, or maybe it's even zero, um, but if it does go, if your expenses keep going up, if your personal costs keep going up, if your tax keeps going up, it's probably because you are in the wrong quadrant. You might think you're in one quadrant when in fact you're in another. So let's have a look and go back to these quadrants. So E stands for employees. Now, these are people who basically have a job, they have an income, uh, and... 20 years ago, this was a fantastic quadrant to be in. It meant that you had stability within your job. We all know that the old adage when we were growing up, even in my case, was 
I'll make sure you go to school, get good grades, go to a good university so you can get a good job and a good salary and a good pension. And it kind of followed that that standard route of school to grades to salary to pension. The problem is that this quadrant at the moment, one, what people do with their money is is kind of incorrect. They give it away to things like pension funds and and stuff like this, which can be um, just as damaging as, as kind of not saving any money at all, frankly. But also, there's absolutely no guarantee that the amount of work that you put into school and the grades you get will equal a good salary. I happen to know now dozens of my friends who got much, much better grades than me at school who, frankly, salary-wise, are, are doing um, pretty average. Like they did, There was no need for them to work so hard at school. But at the same time, um, what they actually do with their money, what happens with their money, um, ends up, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't really go much further, okay? They never really seem to have anything left over anyway. So this is basically the E quadrant, employees quadrant. 99% of us aren't in this quadrant. It's absolutely fine if you want to be in that area. You know, there's very little responsibility, but also there's less um, ability to grow with your money. Having said that, there's absolutely no reason why people can't be in the employees uh, quadrant and still put massive amounts of money away and grow their financial freedom. Next, we have the uh, specialist. Now, this also has um, a, another name of small biz. Here's what happens with the specialist. Specialists earn income-wise. They still earn income, but they earn a lot more. Okay, They earn a lot more than employees. So typically, what we're talking about here is professionals such as surgeons, lawyers, you know, people who still charge per hour, but they charge a high amount per hour. This is kind of the fundamental area where most small businesses go wrong, is they are in fact a small business, and really they're a specialist, and all they've really got, especially as funnel builders, digital marketers, WordPress businesses, we find that our income is still essentially a job. The money comes to us personally, and it's up to us to do something smart with it. It's up to us to do um, something worthwhile with it. And what we find is that the income that comes in is still exactly pretty much the same as the employees. It might be slightly higher, but the way that that income goes out, it can't grow outside of our hourly rate or day rate. This here is a, is a, is a fine, again, another fine quadrant to be in, but it's very, very difficult to grow a business when you see yourself as a specialist. Um, and we're going to talk about the transition from specialist over to one of these other quadrants. Next, we have B for business. Now, here's the reason why a lot of people who think they're a business are, in fact, not in a business. They essentially own a job. Specialist, in my opinion, is one of the worst areas to be in. Now, if you're an employed specialist, such as a um, a surgeon or a lawyer, and you know you have some kind of job security. Now, I don't have time to go into the fact that job security doesn't exist anymore. I myself have been made redundant twice, and I'm, I was that was before I was 26 years old. Um, so specialists are, are fine. The problem is, is a lot of small businesses think they are a business when in fact they are really a specialist. So what I mean by that is they're hired as a consultant or a freelancer, and yeah, they might have um, a limited company or a, a, a corporation or a limited liability company or something, but they are in fact a specialist because they still own their job, and the reason you can, the way you can tell if you are a business owner or if you're a specialist is if you left the business, would you still generate money? See, a business is something that generates income through assets. If I owned a business, rather than managing it, rather than working in it, rather than being in it, if I owned a business, the business would generate me assets even if I wasn't around. Now, this is the ideal place that a lot of people want to get to. I have a couple of family members who own a, ch a small chain of um, shops here in the UK, and I know that they can go away and they can leave and they can only they only work you know a few days a week. Uh, but they know that the business is still going to generate revenue, still going to generate income because it's an asset. It puts money in their pockets. They might have built the business from scratch. You know, I'm a business owner. Um, we have a couple of employees. You know, I still have to do a lot of work in the business. I can't retire just yet. But the difference is that specialists don't have a system, but businesses have a system. 
For example, uh, they might be a franchise model like McDonald's, you know, or they certainly at least have some kind of process not that dissimilar to what John Warrillow talks about in his book, um, Built to Sell. And in Built to Sell, John talks about um, the process is the product. Michael Gerber in his book also talks about this in The E-Myth and The E-Myth Revisited. Um, the idea is you have to have some kind of system that generates income through assets without you having to be there. That's the big difference. If you're struggling with this kind of um, this problem here on the right hand side, in that any income you get, your profit seems to stay the same, but your personal expenses, the business expenses and the tax all seem to go up. It's probably because you think you're in the business uh, quadrant when in fact you're actually in the specialist quadrant. And your job needs to be tra to transition from specialist into a business owner, from small business into business. That doesn't mean that you have to have hundreds of employees. It doesn't mean that you have to have everything overly complicated or you become a corporation. It means there needs to be some kind of system and all of the responsibilities and the process that you go through, it needs to be taken care of by somebody else. So those processes and responsibilities need to become the system in order for you to grow your business through being an asset. We all know that freelancers and small businesses and specialists hate to take time off because if they take time off, it means that they don't have any income. Now, a system could be anything from recurring revenue-based packages, outsourcing, you could get other people to do it. We tend to follow the model whereby I would rather take 10% of any income and share the rest around people who can do it because it means I don't have to do anything for 10% of the income as opposed to doing everything for 90% of the income. The final quadrant is investor. Now, an investor also generates income from assets, but they also buy assets. So whereas the business owner might build out that asset and build out that business and build out that system that generates them income through their assets, an investor puts money into assets, which then further grows their income. Ideally, most people uh, want or should or are trying to move from business owner into investor. Most business owners who are business owners know that the true route, true path to financial freedom is to start investing in other businesses. We all know of things like Shark Tank and Dragon's Den and whatever where you know we can put in 10% and see a return. Now again it's it's kind of similar to that. You know there's also stocks, there's shares, there's mutual funds, there's property, there's uh, passive income assets such as courses and books and things like this. There's products, there's development. There's loads of ways to become an investor. Here's what's important. The investor quadrant in my opinion, is the easiest one to start getting involved in. The reason why is that even an employee can take 10% of their income and start putting it into investments. They could save it and put it in, some people call it IRAs in America or ISAs in what we call them in ISAs um, in in England, and then start investing in things like funds. Now, I'm not a financial advisor, so I'm not telling you that you should be going to do this. This is what I do. Uh, full disclaimer, I've got absolutely no financial advising background. This is just, I'm just explaining what I do. But also, specialists can also begin to put 10% away into investor-based assets, and business owners can also put 10% or even more. The transition that's very, very difficult to make is from specialist over to small business, let me clear some of this up. The transition that's difficult to make is from either specialist to small business or from um, employee, to, sorry, from specialist to business or from employee to business. And I'll explain why. The reason that people really struggle from going from employee to true business owner, and most of us, if we're being honest, have actually gone from employee down to Specialist. That's really what we've done. We've we've given up a regular paycheck and we've decided to become a specialist. Maybe we call ourselves a consultant or a freelancer or whatever it is. The difficult part now that the first thing that you have to overcome is fear. That is the biggest emotion to overcome in order to become a specialist. But where most people fall down is they then try uh, to run their specialist based operation as a small business and it doesn't work. They fall into this um, category here again 
of, you know, uh, <laughs> basically having a paycheck that they can't guarantee they own their job, which can be very, very difficult to build yourself out of. Now, this again, from transitioning from specialist to business or from small business to business, also is based around fear. Most people, when they're told that they have to create some kind of system or some kind of process for all the stuff they do, will instantly be fearful and they'll instantly think of reasons why they can't or don't have to do that. They usually think things like, oh, well, um, I'm you know very specialized at what I do. I don't really trust anyone else to do that. Uh, it's not really something that I think I can do. I don't want a lot of employees. That is a fear-based response. The problem is that a lot of people think they're being very logical when they say, you know, I'm a, I'm a very specialist marketer, a very specialist funnel builder. I don't trust anyone else. First of all, you learned it from someone. And with all due respect, you probably haven't invented the things that you're going after. So you had to learn it from someone. Secondly, uh, this kind of this this weird paradox that a lot of freelancers have is that they first of all believe that they're the only ones who have their particular standard and method of doing it, but at the same time, when they look at anyone else's work, they think, "My God, that person's so good! I'll never be as good as them. I'll never be able to charge as much." It can't be both things. It has to be uh, either one or the other. And t in this particular case, it's actually neither of them. They're, they're they're a paradox, and neither of them are true. You are absolutely able to take your process and your responsibilities and begin to turn that into a system. McDonald's did it. Uh, now, McDonald's product is, is pretty terrible, even if I say so myself, and I do frequent McDonald's every once in a while. Um, but they have a process whereby I know that if I drive in or pull up, I'll be able to get um, absolutely the same product every single time. That's because the system is the product. And transitioning from specialist over to over to business owner, transitioning from the S quadrant over to the B quadrant is very, very difficult, but it means, means that you have to overcome fear. The problem with fear is that we often say that we're being very, very logical simply because we can justify our position. By definition, if you have got any kind of emotion, and the funny thing about emotion is that we often don't recognize it in ourselves. If I say, if I suddenly recognize, oh yeah, I am in the specialist in small business, and I go, yeah, but I only, I build marketing funnels and I build email marketing and email campaigns in a very specific way. No one else can do that. Now that's just logical that no one else can do that. Actually, that is a fear-based response. It's purely fear-based response. I think it's logical because I can justify internally. The reality is that there are millions of people who could do the exact same thing as me if I mark out that process and if I begin to work on that system. So by transitioning our processes and responsibilities into some kind of system that other people can do, what we find is that the, uh, the, the job, the income level pretty much stays the same. Now initially our expenses do go up Okay, I understand that they do go up. However, our personal expenses uh, can also still go up. Our tax actually tends to go down. What we what we find is the more we work on our um, our business and and having a decent business system, tax actually ends up going down. Now, ex uh, expenses typically level out at a point. They typically level out. I know that my business is thirty percent expenses, and that's it. So while yes, it might be three hundred dollars one month and a thousand dollars the next month, I know that that's only thirty percent of my total income. Our profit also tends to keep going up. And what I mean by that is it's always at 5%. We grow 5% month on month every single month because I decide that that's true. Now, this is actually taken from um, another book called Profit First by Mike McCallowitz, um, who I highly recommend reading because it's an absolutely outstanding book. But what we find is that by creating a system by creating something that's repeatable and works over and over and over and over again, that creates growth and that allows us to transition out of the uh, small business and specialist and into the business quadrant, which is where a lot of us really want to be if you want to run it. Now, if you want to continue being a specialist and being the one person in your business who does everything and being a consultant, that's absolutely fine. But I just implore you to ask yourself, are you making that decision because that's what you truly, truly want? That's truly where you believe you'll find financial freedom 
Or is it because you're afraid of the responsibilities, you're afraid of losing control, you're afraid of transitioning into a new quadrant, and you're afraid of uh, creating this kind of system? Because I would argue a lot of people think and convince themselves they want to stay as a specialist and stay in the S quadrant when really they do want to be in the business quadrant. They want financial freedom. And true financial freedom, true financial freedom is when our assets are greater than our expenses. So when our assets and uh, are, are greater than our expenses, that's when we have financial freedom. If you are a specialist and if you are having to rely on income and you have to do the job, if you take time off, you don't get paid. Therefore, very difficult to find financial freedom. So that's the cash flow quadrant explained by Rob Kiyosaki. Uh, I've just drawn this out for a few of the funnel builders here. I hope you enjoyed that. The book is called Rich Dad's Cash Flow Quadrant. Absolutely outstanding book. I highly recommend that you that you buy it. Very, very easy to read. I smashed it out in a couple of days. Uh, thanks very much for watching. Let me know in the comments if you've read Rich Dad, Poor Dad, or if you've read uh, the cash flow quadrant, or if there's any other financial books that I should check out, particularly around um, freelancing and small business. Uh, and uh, yeah, make sure to uh, check us out on our podcast, the sellyourbrandshow.com, where I talk with my mate James about all sorts of marketing bollocks and nonsense. Uh, and I will see you on the next video. Cheers, guys.